Whenever anyone asks me why I am part of the women's liberation movement, I always reply, because I am a woman. What they have said to me is that since I am a black person, black oppression is the only oppression with which they expect me to concern myself. But for me not to participate in the women's liberation movement would be to deny my womanhood. Rosemary Brown was born in Jamaica into a family of strong, educated women. She came to Canada in 1951 to attend university. As a student at McGill, and later the University of British Columbia, Rosemary faced pervasive discrimination. It was through adversity that she found her purpose as a leader against racism and sexism. Indeed, I'm twice blessed. I am black and I'm a woman. And to be black and female in a society which is both racist and sexist is to be in the unique position of having nowhere to go but up. By the mid-1960s, Rosemary was married, had three children and three university degrees, including a master's in social work. She was a member of the BC Association for the Advancement of Colored People and appeared regularly as a panelist on the nationally syndicated series People in Conflict. Unless the women's liberation movement supports the struggles of the poor, of the oppressed races, of the old and other disadvantaged groups in society, it will never achieve its goals. Not to do so would be to isolate itself from the masses of women that make up a large segment of all these groups. In 1972, she made history by becoming the first black woman elected to a Canadian legislature. She made history again in 1975 when she became the first black woman to run for leadership of a federal political party. Rosemary Brown served as the member of the Legislative Assembly for Vancouver Burrard until 1986. During her 14-year career in provincial politics, she pushed for legislation to prohibit gender-based discrimination and worked toward improving services for immigrants, people with disabilities, the elderly and other marginalized groups. Rosemary's years in office showed women from all backgrounds that they could make a difference. In the following years, more women held positions on boards and commissions across British Columbia. This country, Canada, is beautiful and strong only because of the people of both sexes and of all races. And its strength and its beauty will increase only to the extent that it is able to accept and respect all of its people equally.